As you get outside, you realise that you've been thrown into the Seven Hour War. And I admit, a game about the Seven Hour War is interesting to me. I haven't actually seen this done before. It could have been done as a mod, but I haven't seen such a thing happen yet. Especially not in this sort of style. However, the Seven Hour War, that terrible final war where everything devolved into fucking nothing during the course of several hours and it pushed humanity to subjugation, it was actually just a bunch of these motherfuckers pouring out of portals and the military just kicking the shit out of them. Seriously, at no point you feel like you're losing in the battle, except when your US Army buddies try taking down a combined strider by throwing grenades three feet in front of them. Shits are so funny because they keep throwing grenades two feet in front of them. Light that shit up! I love that they have fucking combine grenades. I'm gonna kill this guy before he hurts anyone else. Protect and serve, you know? The AI is hilariously stupid. They just sit there as you stab them to death. I wiped out an entire platoon of dumbass marines, and not a single one of them fought back. I mean, I can't say I blame them. I mean, they live in Hunt Down the Freeman, so I wouldn't fight back either, but, you know. I mean, would you want to live in a world where this is a thing? I mean, just look at that! It was coloured in with the Gary's Mod colour tool for fuck's sake! To my memory, anyway. So... Yeah. This is a thing in the game. I showed this to a 14-year-old and he actually pissed himself laughing. I, I work at a school and I showed this to a kid after school and said, Kid, what do you think of this as a game mechanic? Like, is it a, sorry, as a fucking prop in a game. And he just burst out laughing. He said, how is this a fucking thing in a game that you get charged money for? And I said, I don't know. And he said, do I get an A now for agreeing with you? And I told him to fuck off. Anyway, some of these vehicles are ripped straight from Half-Life 2. And the state that they're in pretty much says that they had their wheels removed, were seemingly left out in the rain for 20 years, and probably crushed by falling equipment during a massive war. Man, that must have been one hell of a car crash. Going back to the dipshit AI, I think the worst AI is the companion AI. In the obligatory avoid the minefield section, as seen in Half-Life 1 and 2, where you had to avoid a bunch of claymores as you slowly navigated a room, I found myself massively hindered by the AI. After some trial and error, I actually made it to the end, only to realise that I was stuck. The escalator in front of me wouldn't let me go, there was some sort of invisible wall there, and I couldn't interact with anything either. So after walking through the very difficult puzzle, and I mean walk through, in the most literal sense possible, I mean, it was actually funny how little of a fuck I gave as I went back and to treating this minefield as you would a messy bedroom, only to discover that my AI partner was hiding in the girls' toilets, presumably sniffing the seats. I don't mind him having his kinks, but can he do that in his own fucking time? It turned out that I actually needed him to advance, so I had to get across on my own, only for him to literally just run through the minefield without setting any of the mines off. Jesus fucking Christ! I mean, this guy's supposed to be a fucking Black Ops specialist. How did he manage in the field? That killed me. Now, you might be wondering, how is that able to kill you? Good question. So I got to this army base, and there's this guy there with a tash who just sort of yells things at me. I took the opportunity to get some more ammo by killing everyone in the room who could be killed. Which was fine, apparently. Nobody even reacted to it. Then President Keemstar informs us that everything is fucked, and we're surrendering. For now. Commander in Chief, it is with a heavy heart that I'm informing you that we have made a strategic decision to surrender to the alien invaders known as the combine right now this is the best chance all of this because his speech is basically we're surrendering for now 
It's like, this yeah, I'm pretty sure the Combine can hear you say that of my life Yeah, we're gonna rise up and we're gonna kill them. Okay, I, I don't think it's a good idea to actually say that again and again. When you're, you know, declaring that you surrender onto a, a way more powerful force. core values and everything we hold dear. Yet, the fact and hard truth remains that we lost this battle for now. And believe me, we will live to fight another day. We shall return. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. The United States of America. I love how he says this. Like, he's assuring us that we're surrendering for now, but then we're gonna fuck the Combine over. You are aware that the Combine can probably hear and understand that you plan to do this, right? I know that a highly intelligent alien army would probably guess that you had this up your sleeve, but you could at least pretend that you aren't planning to fuck them over, and could at least try to avoid giving them an excuse to wipe you off the face of the planet. Anyway, we get a train out of New Mexico, and this is where things just went to shit for me. The idea is you're supposed to protect a train from incoming gunships. But that's not what happens. You get a minigun from a guy who literally falls from the sky. This guy fucking appears out of thin air and drops it right in front of you. Who is he? I don't know. Where did he come from? Fucked if I know. I'm serious. He fucking teleports right before your eyes and crashes into the floor holding a minigun like that scientist in Half-Life Opposing Force. I really would have found it funny if this was you from the future and it was some sort of Time Splitters Future Perfect kind of dealie, but sadly not, no. You take his minigun and stand on top of the train, but make no mistake, you aren't here to save the train. You're just here to waste time and watch it burn until the game decides that it's ready to move on. I literally spent 20 or so minutes shooting down combine gunships, which are made out of paper mache in this game, like everything else, only to realise that I could have just quit earlier and just gotten back in the train. I should probably mention that enemies do not work like they do in Half-Life 2. Combine Hunters, for example, who are a major threat in Half-Life 2 Episode 2, where they make their debut and even have a chapter dedicated to having to fight them, they're just overglorified turrets in this game, and they die in a dozen or so hits. I mean, let's just forget the fact that they are versatile, intelligent, and the first time that Gordon Freeman encounters one, it fucks him and his partner up. Back to the train thing though, you have to stop doing this around the time that the train gets completely destroyed, minus the driver's cabin. At this point, you jump down into the driver's cabin and advance the story, but you're not told this, and therefore, you can forgive me for not thinking of it. After seeing the entire train getting destroyed, and knowing that the cabin being destroyed would most likely mean game over for all of us. It's this part of the game where it stopped feeling like anything that I should be paying for. This is unprofessional even for a mod. For a start, it's buggy as all fuck. I fell off the train by accident at one point, and I ended up moving at the speed that the train was going, and more or less just ice skating alongside it, just shooting everything, until I got left behind, and more or less spent 10 minutes seeing how far I could get before I died. The second thing that really annoys the shit out of me is the complete lack of communication with the game and its player. Half-Life normally requires you to figure stuff out on your own. However, when you do face situations like this, an NPC at least briefs you on what you're about to do and why you're doing it. Here, it's just a shitty guess. You never know if you've completed your objective or not. Nothing tells you this, and you're just left carrying on doing the same things over and over again until you realise that you could have stopped five or so minutes ago. The node graphic is constantly needing to rebuild pretty much after every map loads in, which just damages the immersion for me. There are so many rookie mistakes that this should not be classed as a finished product, and it should certainly not be sold on Steam. 
It even did the invention thing where instead of cutting to the next area, it just faded to black and left me in limbo. Nice game design you've got there. I'd actually lost all patience by this point. I was so annoyed that I couldn't see myself doing anything like that again. At this point, I'm dumped on top of a vehicle and I honestly thought that it was going to make me do a rail shooting turret segment. That's when I quit. Now, I am going to give this game credit and say that it wasn't a rail shooter turret segment, because you actually got to drive the fucking car, but it's still a turret segment, so fuck that. I've played through a lot of shit, but this game is so broken, so boring and frustrating and lacking in any fucking common sense that I can't deal with it any longer. You know that it must be fucking dreadful if I didn't want to replay it to get the footage and I had to more or less force myself to do so. Everything, bar the music, which I actually think is pretty nice, if it's an original composition, which as far as I'm aware it is, I might actually buy the soundtrack, as it's not far off from being as good as Black Mesa or Dear Esther in terms of quality. However, the story is pretentious fan fiction. The animation in the cutscenes is god awful, and the gameplay is boring most of the time, and it does my nut in the rest. Found some. And now I can get the fuck out of here. Oh, that one's stuck in the fucking. This is my chance to go. <laughs> my chance to go. But my legs have been broken. It's so fucking dreadful that its funny moments are quickly overshadowed by the fact that you have to wait for an hour for something to happen or from the fact that you have to reset the game to get the cunt to actually work. The amount of time I'd spent waiting for this game to load, I could have played a game like Way of Hero and beaten it, because that game only takes 10 minutes to beat. Part of me really wanted this to be good, as it's been 5 or so years since I've had a good Half-Life game, and I wanted that again. What I got was Hunt Down the Freeman. I honestly think this game might be forgivable if it was a free mod, and it could attract other developers to work on it, and then once it was good, they could put it on Steam. They could get some people to reanimate the cutscenes, and even work around the writing. But it's a finished product on Steam, it's not even in early access, and therefore, I just can't commend this. Honestly, I think Invention is better than this. And I'm planning on bollocking the developers of that game, but hell, at least those games are more functional than this shit. They reuse assets from the Unity Store, but at least they have the right to use those assets, and at least they are able to cobble together something that's of the quality expected for a shitty Steam game. Also, it's like a quid, so it's cheaper as well, and more or less the same quality as this shitty fucking game. Due to how bad Steam is right now, it's hard to say how bad of a product this is. Ten years ago, this would have been the worst thing on Steam, but right now, this might actually be one of the better shitty games on Steam. Which is tragic for the state of Steam, but fuck it, Valve don't give a shit, so why should I? This game feels like an Icarus scenario, where it was so arrogant during its development that it kind of assumed that people would love it off of the bat. Duke Nukem Forever did the same thing, and critics just hate things that do this all the more. In all honesty, I do see potential here. I think with a stronger team, with better writers and map makers and some better game design works around player feedback and reviews, this could be something good. This isn't a case of something that lacks effort or has no right to exist. Hell, I'd say that it's quite clear that a degree of passion went into this game. But none of that matters if the game is a fucking mess. The best word that I can describe this game with is broken. That's what it all boils down to. If this was generic and shit but worked fine, it wouldn't be as bad. But it's so incompetently put together, and considering how great campaigns I've seen in Left 4 Dead, like Suicide Blitz and Questionable Ethics, work as their own products, it makes me wonder why this was picked as a product good enough to be sold on Steam. This game feels like it was made in months rather than years, and you need years worth of work in order to make a fantastic game like Black Mesa or No More Room in Hell. 
There's few original assets, you can actually escape the game in certain places, and in every scene I find something that's just broken, or just not right. It's like the kind of maps that I used to make when I was 14. This just doesn't belong on Steam. It should be taken down and taken back to the drawing board and evaluated. More people should be brought in to fix the things that don't work. Like, instead of hiring YouTuber voice actors, hire some YouTuber source filmmaker animators, so your animation doesn't look so stilted and awkward. Instead of stealing assets, hire someone that knows how to make more or at least get the rights to buy some that we aren't so familiar with. Get someone talented at map making to polish up your maps and for fuck's sake make some sort of tutorial, even if it's optional like you get in Half-Life 1. I would genuinely love to see this game come back as something better. Something that makes this review obsolete and everything I've put into it worth it. And if that happens, I'd even re-review it. However, in the game's current state, I wouldn't even recommend it to someone as a joke. It's a broken pretentious mess in which any potential was just squandered by the head designer's desire to see it on Steam before it was actually ready to be there. game crash. Alright, so I was going to end it on that slightly optimistic note, but there's two things I need to address that I only since found out after I wrote this script, and they're not worth disassembling the script to talk about. The first is that the developer claims that the wrong version of this game was uploaded to Steam, and that's why it's a broken piece of shit. This is like the alpha build or something. Now, this is a load of bollocks, and here's why. I know what an unfinished game looks like. Like, for example, Black Mesa. The first time they released Black Mesa, it had placeholder title chapter names, where it was called hashtag chapter two or something like that, instead of the actual chapter names. And certain items had different names, some placeholder models were still being used, but the game was still very functional. Now, this game on the other hand has all of the finishing touches done to it, but is full of problems. Full of them that I know would not be finished, even in the most fixed and up-to-date version of this game. Like, are they telling me that they added an invisible wall to stop you walking off the edge of the map or even seeing over the edge of the map? Are they telling me that they actually made it so that the game didn't crash at certain points? Was that train section fixed in the original version that apparently only exists on their hard drive? And also, why the fuck are you still selling it on Steam? Why aren't you discouraging people from buying it? Fucking bollocks. And finally... Apparently, the guy who made the game held this game back for literally no reason. You know all those delays I talked about at the beginning that made me almost give up on reviewing this shit? Well, apparently, that happened for no reason. They just did it for publicity or some shit. Well, you know what? It actually made me less interested in the game than anything. It amused me that this titanic game of yours kept being held back but when it actually came out i gave so little of a fuck that i almost didn't play it at all so congratulations on that front and honestly the more this developer opens his mouth or the more that comes out the more i wonder why steam is allowing this jackass to sell his games like, fuck's sake, Valve, sort yourselves out. What the fuck?
Agent Mitchell in the flesh. Or rather, his remains. Hmm. This is where I get off. Ah!